Hello, my name is Simon Benjamin, and together with my colleague Ying Li here at the Center for Quantum Technologies in Singapore, I've been thinking about a particular approach to uh, building quantum computers. Um, we're both theorists, so what we do is work out stuff on paper and hope that it's interesting to the experimentalists. The title of our paper is High Threshold Distributed Quantum Computing with Three Qubit Nodes, which is quite a mouthful. I think if I explain what that title means, I'll have done a pretty reasonable job of explaining uh, our paper. So quantum computers, of course, are this dream of modern physics, the idea of a machine that harnesses quantum states in order to do calculations that are effectively impossible with ordinary technology. Uh, in order to build such a machine, we need to have a very large number of components, each of which is storing a quantum state. So that would be the basic component is a qubit. We need lots of them, all under good control. The distributed quantum computing approach is kind of an architecture, an overall scheme for how to do this, which tries to make things as scalable as possible. So the idea is don't put all your qubits into a single grand array, a monolithic structure. That is one way to go, but in distributed QIP, instead, you try and build small units, which you might call modules or nodes, each of which has only a few qubits inside it. You get good at building that and controlling it, then you make lots of them and network them together to make the large machine. The network you expect to be um, a noisy network, a poor network. And that's, that's your scheme for the entire machine. It's distributed in the sense that it's kind of exploded out from a single monolithic structure, but it's of course not distributed over you know, large distances, all in one room. Okay, so that's that part of it, the threshold thing. Okay, so a threshold in the field refers to um, a level of precision that you need to reach in order that when you try and do a large scale computation, the errors don't get out of control. Instead, the errors um, are coming in at a low enough rate that you can detect and correct and, and uh, tolerate them, basically. If you're uh, within your threshold, you can do this. If you're outside of the threshold, then errors will build up so fast that the calculation goes off track and gives you nonsense. So of course, you want the threshold to be as permissive as possible, as high as possible. And what Ying and I thought to ourselves is, let's try and figure out what is the threshold for this distributed quantum computing approach. We're gonna have two key numbers, how good is the network, how good is the control inside the node. And we gave ourselves uh, only three qubits per node. We thought about that case because we thought it would be the simplest case that would give us um, a good threshold. Three qubit nodes are a reasonable thing to ask for. Lots of experimental groups can basically do that, can basically give you three qubits. So what we found was that we, uh, our threshold was 10% noise in the network, which means one time in 10, uh, when you try and communicate over the network, it just, unbeknownst to you, it corrupts the qubits involved. And 0.1% um, noise within the nodes themselves. So that means on those rare occasions when you try and flip a qubit or something, it actually corrupts that qubit. So 10% for the network, 0.1% for the local operations in each node. Those numbers are tough, especially the 99.9% .9 precision within each node is tough, but not ridiculously so. There are experimental groups in uh, superconducting qubits or in uh, iron traps or envy centers who are pushing past uh, the sort of 99% threshold. So that could be reached. But also we should stress that we're always trying to improve these, find better schemes that have even more permissive thresholds, even at the same time as the experimentalists are trying to improve their stuff and we hope that soon, not in, in, you know, pretty soon, we may see these numbers actually meeting. And then in principle, you can go ahead and try and build uh, a large scale machine. OK, so uh, a few remarks for the experts. Uh, how did we get a high threshold with such a small number of qubits per node? We basically abandoned something which is pretty much most of the previous authors had done, which is to distill bell pairs within each node of high quality and use those to power your actual quantum gate between your core qubits, your client or data qubits. We don't do that. Instead, we parity project, noisy parity projections on the uh, core qubits. And we do that repeatedly until the parity projection becomes effectively pure. And it's a result due to Earl Campbell from a while back that this basically can be done. So then we just need to use those parity projections to make something useful. What we make is the 3D cluster state, uh, which is uh, a resource for uh, topologically protected quantum computing uh, in the style described by Rausendorf. So that's our target. And we find we only need six parity projections to do it, which is basically why we're able to get the high thresholds that we have.
Okay, well, if any, if any of this is of interest or reading the paper is of interest, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me with comments or criticisms. Thanks for listening.